Hey there, guys. TC made with TC Gaming. Wanted to get this live stream out to you. I talked about this a couple days ago. Uh, the Cinti Asset Store is running a 50% off sale on some of their top assets right now for the month of May. And I own a lot of the Cinti Asset Packs, so I was going to put together a couple of live streams just to go through some of them and kind of give you guys an overview of what's available inside of those packages. See if maybe uh, you know I can help you make a decision on you know maybe purchasing them or whatever. I don't get paid by the Cinti company to do this. It's just something that I think is a really great asset for indie developers. So I thought I would put it in there. Um, let's see, who's somebody just uh, sent me a message in there? ATS ineffable. So yeah, we're starting now. I don't know if you're seeing the stream there, but uh, basically, as I was saying, Cinti's having a 50% off top 3D asset sale for the uh, the rest of the month here. And I am going to go through and show you a couple of those. So in an Unreal Engine project, I have the uh, Polygon Dungeon map set up. And I'm just pulling up the overview map. That's something I was working on for something else. A couple of things in here just uh, in the middle of game dev. So let me get rid of those few things that aren't actually part of this package. But this is an overview map for the... Cinti Dungeons. So I'm just going to zoom out on this and then what we'll do is we'll go down through it and kind of do a little flyover. But these are all of the things that are included with that package. And you can see there's just a lot of assets in there and it makes for a pretty uh, pretty easy to, to build system when you have that much <clears throat> laying around in your in your toolkits. So I'll zoom in on this and uh, hopefully you guys will be able to see the details and everything in here. And then if you want to, you can always slow down the video or go back and pause it. But even down in here, just a lot of little features. All these different characters are included in that package. And here in a minute, I'll show you how I uh, repurposed one of these for the uh, combat system, the dynamic combat system. So you get like a male knight character, a couple of orcs, and uh, skeleton assets. I'm going to turn this camera speed down a little bit. We can just kind of pan through here. So I'll just dolly around like this. But now these characters don't come with any animations. You'll see here in a second that I have animations in here, but they're actually from the uh, combat system. So again, this is the Polygon Dungeon package at the Cinti Asset Store. Just tons and tons and tons of uh, content in here. <clears throat> and the nice thing about these all is that they're very uh very user friendly and they all look good together so if you buy multiple packs like i ended up buying the uh the dungeon kit i bought the pirate kit i bought the viking kit i bought all the different uh add-ons and, and adaptations of those and bought the battle royale set and everything else so it's i mean you can see it's just a lot of stuff here these are banners i don't know if you can see those from where i'm at <clears throat> but these are like wall banners that hang down on columns and here in a second i'm going to show you the uh the inside of a uh, one of the levels here that they send you is kind of a demonstration map level. They even have some decorative stuff out here for skeletons and things that you could hang inside of like a little dungeon room, little like prison area. We've got baskets and stuff in here. Maybe I'll speed this up a little bit. Might be going a little too slow for some of you guys. But you got all kinds of crates and barrels and you know boxes with items in them. And I think there's somewhere in here there's treasure chests and lids. You got these clay pots and bookshelves. There's a couple couple treasure chests. So the reason I did this live um, as a live stream is because just on the odd chance that somebody got on here and wanted me to show them something specifically, I figured this would be a good opportunity to do that as opposed to you seeing a static video that you couldn't ask any questions about. So, uh, you know, if you have questions or you want me to zoom in on something or you want to look at it in the in the game editor, please feel free to let me know. I'm going to do a featurette like this for each of these packs uh, probably over the next couple of days while the sale's going on just to help you see what all's in these things. And there's also another guy out there on the YouTube uh, circuit. His name is Beefalo Bart. And Beefalo Bart did a lot of these um, these Cinti Asset pack features a while back, several months ago. It's where I kind of saw some of the first ones that I decided to buy. And uh, I think he's actually even compiled some games um, for these walkthroughs, like the overviews and stuff, but there's just a lot of content in here. So, here's some weapons, banners for little camps, 
You got all kinds of weapons there. These are all part of the same pack, you know. So, um, again, if you're just joining in this and you want me to zoom in on something or kind of show you what's going on in here or you want to get some more detail about it, feel free to ask a question in the chat. I'm trying to watch on my iPad while I'm zooming through here. On these uh, pillars right here, these little stone things with the um, the runes on them, they actually have these also in a flat, um, round, rounded icon set. So you could put markers in different areas of the game. You know, if you wanted to kind of have people locate something based on using that. I'm going to turn the speed up a little bit more and zoom over this other area. We'll get back out here a little bit and we'll come around. Got a lot of stone features for building sceneries and landscape there. A lot of different columns. There's some of those flat markers with runes on them that I was talking about a second ago. And there's even more, I think, over in this other area of the map. But you get all these different pillars. There's a bunch of textures in here. And you got some stuff to build crypts. You got these really nice little statue features also. You know, these kind of reminded me of like a Diablo checkpoint type thing or something. You know, maybe it's like a binding point or something. Um, or a place to heal or restore uh, mana maybe, you know. Here's these little stone markers I was talking about that are rounded off. So they're pretty neat. Just all kinds of little stuff here. And then what I said is uh, after I get done doing this, I will go into one of the demonstration maps. And then I'll show you, kind of put it in context, I'll talk a little bit about the uh, dynamic combat system that I was using in some of the stuff I was playing with earlier, just to kind of give you a perspective of a character walking around. So again, if you're watching this back, you know, for, you know, obviously you can pause and zoom in and all that kind of stuff. And, or not, well, you're not going to zoom in on the video, but you know what I mean. You can pause and, and look at these things. But if you see something here you want me to zoom in on or, or check out in more detail, let me know and I'll pull it up. I am going to go through the browser window also in here and show you some of these uh, that I may have missed along the way. So inside of your polygon dungeon pack, that's in the maps listed as an overview. And I'll go into the demonstration map now and show you what's in there. One of the things I really like about when you buy the Cinti packs directly from the store is that they kind of give you a an idea of how everything works together right out of the box. So you can see this right here. I mean, this is just a beautiful dungeon, all pre-built. And actually, I'll zoom out of it first, and then we'll come back into it like we did with the other one. So you can kind of see what you're dealing with here from the top down that they've already laid out this whole area for you to kind of walk around and see the different spots that they have in it. That's pretty much the whole map there. So we came in in this little courtyard area, and then there's some other little side rooms and tunnels that lead out to, uh, to different spots where they used a lot of the assets in there. So I will zoom back down into this main area, and we'll just kind of fly through. And then I'll pull a character in here, and we'll talk about how you can repurpose those characters for this. But again, if you have questions or you want to see something in more detail, just let me know. So there's a couple of people out there watching. I'm going to turn this camera down a little bit so we can kind of float through in here. Just kind of put them in context with lighting and everything. Down in here, they've got a little side, little side room going on. I'm not even sure what the price of this dungeon package is, and they also put a, a new add-on out there for this as well. So, I think it was, I want to say it was probably like fifty or sixty bucks or something at the time I bought it. It might be a little bit more than that. We'll go and see if we can figure out the prices. But again, just to kind of see it in the context, you know, all the different stuff. Now, obviously, you wouldn't probably crowd your your build like this. This has got a lot of stuff in here. And uh, let's see, out of this room here, turn our camera back up a little bit. So out of here, you've got another area where they use this big giant uh, dragon skeleton. 
and some crystal gems, a little tunnel with some train tracks in there, or some uh, rail car tracks for uh, like a mining cart or whatever. Nice little mushrooms, crystals. We'll go over here. We've put out some of these things with a lit up little cavern here. Various runes and gems. And then going back through this way, there's some of your decorative mushrooms and flowers and things with the little chest. And now this area here goes out to nowhere, back outside of the map. We'll go back through. And then we'll go down the sideway here. Now what I was playing with at one point was actually trying to use this with the uh, Dungeon Architect to randomly build these dungeons out. And I saw in one of the videos from the uh, creator of that, his name's Ali Akbar, that he had actually done something similar to that, but I don't remember if he did it with the dungeons. But here's like a little little side room where you'd have uh, maybe some, some of your soldiers or something like that. We'll go straight across the hall from there. They've got these little blade traps and stuff in the walls that you could activate. This takes you back out into that main courtyard. And from here, you're basically a little spike trap in a side room. Okay. So, I don't know if that gives you enough detail there to kind of see what's happening. But now what I'll do is I'll, I'll escape this and go into the editor and we'll just pull up some of these other assets that are in here so again in the polygon dungeon if you go into the materials section they've got uh, a couple of base materials that are in here for the various uh, pieces that they have pretty standard stuff there and then the meshes here are the characters I tried to blow this up a little bit so you could see it and again these don't have anims in there by default, these are these are the animations I put in here from the uh, dynamic combat system, which I'll talk about here in a second. So, just understand you're not going to get animations with these, but uh, they're very easy to port over because this dungeon skeleton is based on the um, the mannequin from Unreal Engine. So you get a uh, ghost character, you get a goblin female, goblin male, uh, goblin shaman, war chief, female warrior. Male warrior, all goblins. Then you get a uh, female knight and a male knight, a rock golem, knight, uh, a skeleton knight, and uh, a couple of other little things. And they've got this uh, skeleton soldier and a tormented soul, which kind of floats around. So that's in your characters. And then in the environment side, if we go in here, there's a lot of uh, little drop downs. So here's some of these bones that they were using out there for the decorative area where that uh, little side room is. Here's some of the floor textures and tiles. And again, this is all part of the same Polygon Dungeon Pack. So for the price you're paying for that, you get plenty of stuff to build with. And you can see, you know, just by this little walkthrough, how cohesive the whole thing is as far as like. You know, dungeon stuff for this particular pack. Any of the packs that they build so far, I've seen nothing but top quality in there. And here are some of those other assets we walked around with. You got some vine spikes out there, trap hatch, and show you that. A couple of uh, spike fences, broken bridges. Hopefully, you can see these well enough. Some of those same things with op optimized textures. Now, what they did on some of these, they're just really thin versions of the uh, other walls so if you were doing something like a long hallway or whatever or a big room you could just put these in there and you don't have uh, a three-dimensional object you just have like a hallway uh, collision mesh basically you know with the texture on it so it looks like something uh, when you're walking down through there but it's, there's no real depth to it. it doesn't have all the triangles being drawn here's this pillars Some of the rock textures or the rock components we showed out there walking around. So just a lot of stuff. Here's your walls.
And then there's some wood textures, or wooden objects, I should say, wooden items, environment items. Like wooden openings to like a cavern, a mine tunnel entrance, things like that. Little wooden bridges. But you can imagine the, the things that you can start to build with laying these out. A um, little bit of the effects for some of the glowing object things that we were looking at earlier. Here's the items that come with it. You got arrows and piles of books and little bags. Um, different masks from skeletons. There's an area of the map I don't think I showed you, which I, I'm going to show you here in a second. I'll go back down through the other side of that. You got this uh, couple little potion items and things. And you got props in here. You got benches and beds and broken barrels and all that kind of stuff. Here's your, your chests with the uh, lids, so they're pretty easy to set up for animations and stuff. And I might go through trying to do some of that, uh, probably not in this stream, but in another stream. Again, I want to just feature these packs for a little bit and show you what's going on, and then we'll get into some more detail. There's those uh, skeleton, skeleton slaves and stuff that were in the prison, you know, and eventually died and just hung there. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of detail of what's included in that pack. They have all this stuff pretty much laid out on their uh, website, and they do like a little video to show you the same thing, but I think sometimes it's easier if you see it inside of the editor. And then here's all the different weapons that come with that package. So go back up to the top here. You've got banners, axes, bones, broken swords. All kinds of fun stuff here. And these things, they are you don't really see them too well in the, in the pictures in here. They don't do a lot of justice for it. But for example, like this ornate sword, um, you know, this thing this thing's pretty cool. And in, the, uh, in the DCS package, the dynamic combat system, you just add sockets to these and then they become usable weapons. So I'll show you how that works here in a second. But any of these basically that you want to turn into a usable weapon with DCS, you just grab it and you go in here and create sockets and assign them up and down the uh, the weapon so that when it comes into contact with the character mesh, it knows how to deal damage. That's pretty easy to set up. And then the same thing with the shields. You can just swap out the textures on them. Uh, so I can show you that as well. But there's that. And then there's some particle effects in here and everything too, which I can't really show you too much. And some more textures, which we talked about in the other the other portion of that. And I don't know if I showed you this one area of the map, so I will do that real quick. So again, coming out of that courtyard, there's this big, big giant uh, hall here. A couple of chests, skeleton guy sitting on a throne. And then down the side tunnel, You've got more of these uh, decorative flowers and lit up objects. And they put some of those banners and an area in here for the, like where a goblin shaman group would be or something like that, you know. A couple goblin warriors in here maybe. But in their, in their fly through they actually have characters all staged up inside there and everything so you can see what it looks like. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hit the uh, play button uh, and actually... Let me see. I don't think I changed out the character. When you get the, if you have the um, dynamic combat system and you start to put together something like this, if anybody wants to see anything about this package, let me know. <clears throat> but the dynamic combat system comes with a bunch of, uh, you know, pre-configured items in here. One of which is the character. So I went into the combat character and changed the mesh out here, and I've retargeted all the blueprints for this so that I'm using uh, in this case the hero knight male and he has a sword and shield the shields actually from the regular package for DCS and the, the sword is um, from the Sinti pack so if I hit play in here and hit F11 to full screen this you'll see I've got my character in here so you got the knight with a shield on and a nice little uh, sword and if you right click your mouse button, he's got the block animation already set up. Left click gets you a sword slash. 
double left clicking will get you a forward and then a side slash and if you hold down the alt key and left click you get a backward uh, strike like that okay WASD keys move you around you know so we can walk our guy through here and kind of see what was going on kind of get you a little perspective of you know what it would look like if you were in the game again I'll go down these little side hallways just run around a little bit but this character's you know fully capable of doing damage with that DCS package And DCS, if you're not familiar with it, the, uh, the dynamic combat system, they actually have a couple of tutorials if you go look, look at the documentation. And those tutorials basically tell you how to retarget to another skeleton like this and, you know, what all the steps are. So, like, the first step is to retarget the animation blueprint. And then the second one is to retarget all the animation montages. And then from the animation montages, you have a couple of... Um, data tables that have to be updated to reference your new montage names <clears throat> and pretty much after that you go through those couple of steps and you're able to pull this up and, and work with it pretty well so that's kind of what I did here to get this and again just kind of walking through let's you see the perspective of <clears throat> excuse me of being a character in this game how things look relative to a character Get that little side hole. But yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it. I just, again, I just wanted to show you the the areas, put them into context for you. And I'll do that same thing with some of the other ones. I'll do the same thing with the uh, pirate. I'll bring a pirate character and we'll walk around a pirate level in the demo. And we'll do the same thing with the other ones that I have. So I got quite a few of these. I didn't buy the Apocalypse package and I didn't buy the... Um, the new kingdom package because i already have two of the dungeon ones and i also have the um the one with the fantasy knights and everything in there so i kind of feel like I, for now i have plenty of plenty of those things if you're running forward and you hit your space bar you roll and if you hold the shift and hit your space bar you jump so that's how this is set up with dcs go down through here look at some other stuff Hopefully this gives you an idea of what's going on inside of here. Beautiful, beautiful asset pack. And uh, very, very reasonable for the price. And pretty much this stuff just uh, just works right out of the box, you know. Gives you pretty nice looking assets. The one thing that was on in here, if you, if you end up downloading and getting this, uh, let me pause that for a second. So in the show section of this on post-processing, they had this eye adaptation turned on. I'm going to flip that on for a second. And this thing gets so bright that it looks like super washed out. So if you end up buying one of these packages, um, you know, you'll, you'll probably want to go in there and change that eye adaptation feature so that you don't have that really, really super harsh light. And you just go under Show, Post-Processing, and uncheck the eye adaptation. And that'll bring your lighting back down to a fairly normal, you know, where it's using the the relationships of the lights that are in the area. So, all right. So let's talk a little bit about the dynamic combat system. Um, again, I said that, that you know, I already had these blueprints in here. But what I was saying is if you go into the skeleton, so in here you're going to have a mesh for your character. You've got a skeleton combat mannequin. The big thing with this is you basically... Under the retargeting options, this is already set to humanoid and has all the bones in it. But what you want to do is you want to take the skeleton that you're going to be putting this on, and you're going to go into the skeleton tree, and you'll see that this skeleton has all these different sockets. So what you do is you take these sockets, for example, you could copy all these. You right-click, after you shift highlight on them, you can just say copy selected sockets. And then what you would do is go to your mannequin, like Polygon Dungeon Mesh Characters. There's a skeleton here. You would go in here, and if you highlight on the one on the other side, you'll see where the, if you go to the details, you'll see what the socket name is and where it's tied. So if you looked at the other one first, you would have seen that this was on the left hand, for example. So if I highlighted all these, I would go over then and I would grab the left hand. I could right-click and say paste, uh, paste sockets to selected bone. And by doing that, it's going to bring these over. Now, once you bring them over, 
your challenge is going to be aligning these so that the new weapons fit the character the right way and basically what you do for that if you notice here I've got some preview meshes on this so I'm gonna go in here and just say remove all attached assets but if I wanted to use the sword that was in the game for example I just right click on this and say add preview asset and I'm gonna go in here and type in sword and their swords called small steel swords this is what it comes with and you can see that that sword is going to be uh, set up incorrectly it's going to be sideways so what you would do with this um, with the sword use socket is you would just click on this little select and rotate and then you could take that and rotate this sword around so that the socket is set up correctly for your for your use you would turn it about 90 degrees for example and then that's going to put it in the proper orientation okay the Sinti swords are 90 degrees off of that so that's what I have this set up now for. So if I go back and say remove all attached assets, <clears throat> I would go in here and say add preview asset, go in and get the sword, and in this case I'm doing like small weapon ornate, and I can line that up so that his blade looks correct to me. And I can do the same thing. I can take his, uh, he's got a thing in here for his shield. So if you highlight, his shield goes on his back there. And what you would do is you would go and you would say, add preview asset and just type in shield and again you're gonna have a couple different options so if I pick like small weapon ornate shield I see that shield is a Sinti shield not the one that comes with uh, their setup so you would go and take the shield socket and you would rotate this 90 degrees and then it's gonna line up to the proper orientation for the character so if I zoom around here I can see that now I feel like it sits a little high and it's, if I can zoom out here, I feel like it's a little bit high, and it's also away from his back, okay? So what you would do is you would, same thing, grab a hold of this uh, shield thing. Now you're just going to grab the translate object thing and slide it down a little bit and then move it in some until you like the way that it looks. And maybe I would bring it down just a little bit more. But that shield object, maybe I'll set it like that. And then you also would take that same shield. Now he's going to end up putting that on his on his arm. So there's a, should be a shield use on here somewhere. Let's see. I'll see shield use. Oh, here it is, shield use. So right click and add preview asset to that also, and then you would do the same shield. And again, most of these you're just going to rotate 90 degrees, so when you put that on there, you're going to flip it back to this little um, translator for the rotation. And I'm holding alt and left clicking to move this over, and then I'm going to take that and rotate it 90 degrees. And that gives it the proper orientation. Now, what's interesting about this asset is that it has handles here, and when it's on this guy's arm, he's not going to have it hold, um, held that way. So what you may want to do is take your shield socket, the shield use socket, and just move it down a little bit so it's kind of tighter to his arm, and then you wouldn't really notice that as much. Okay? And if you want that to be the, uh, the shield that he has... You can just, uh, we'll leave that on the preview for a second. I'll go sw swap it out the other thing. But the other piece is that he has a spot where he holds his uh, sword over here. And that's not called sword use, but it's called, where is it at here? Not sword use, but it's actually the sword socket right here. So same thing, you would take your sword, add preview asset, go over here and say sword, get your small ornate sword. And then you can zoom out or rotate around to see that it's, you know, hanging in the proper orientation when you go to do it. Okay. All right. So then in the DCS package, what I was saying earlier is in order to set all this up, you would go and copy all these sockets, find out where they live, attach them to the skeleton that you want to target this to, which is in a T-pose. And you make sure in your retargeting manager that you have this set up to a humanoid character with those sockets on there. And then in the meshes for 
this guy under the preview scene settings you pull up there's a couple of mannequins here you pull in the one that's already in the T pose and then you just go view pose so it's going to show you what he looks like in there and uh, again you go in here to the skeleton tree copy all of his different bones and paste them onto the other guy now you could actually to make your life easier you can actually go after you've opened this you can go back into the dungeon area like uh, minimize this a little bit and go in here and grab your character and get his skeleton now you have both of them open right here so you can just copy and paste back and forth until you have all the bones oriented the way you want them and get all your previews set up and uh, that should get you a long way now after that in the after you get all the bones set up and you get the characters in the same profile and have them set up in their T poses what you do is you just basically go to the uh, the character here he has his animations in here somewhere so you go into the animations and there's an ABP combat character which is your guy you right click here and say retarget and in blueprints and duplicate and then you just pull up whatever you're putting that on so there's the dungeon skeleton for example so we highlight that and I always do a prefix on here so I would call these SD underscore for Cinti dungeon and then that way when I go into the blueprints for the game and I'm in this BP combat character when I go in here to assign the anim class and the skeletal mesh in this drop down I'm just looking for my SD underscore so I had an ABP combat character that I basically retargeted onto that other skeleton, which is now called SD underscore ABP combat character. And then in the animations, you also have these things that are called, um, where are they at? You have these things in here. Did he put them in here? He might have put them in another one. There's montages. So you go to this montage folder for the player, and you basically pick out what you're doing. So you got one hand combat is one of them. And then the other one that's in there is common. But really what you want to do is just go into montages or into any of the uh, animation stuff. And you're going to want to go in here to the filters. And there's a you show animation. I think it's in here somewhere, animation montage. So that's what you're filtering for. And those are the things that you're basically going to, same thing, you're going to highlight all these. And just right click on them and say retarget anim assets, duplicate these, pick your skeleton, do the same thing, give it the un, uh, SD underscore. And I highly recommend that you have a folder, like in this case here, I would change it. I would have a folder under the meshes and the characters. I would have an anim folder where I would put all of those things. I would put the animation blueprint, all the animations that go with it, and all the animation montages. And again, make sure you prefix those with that SD so that you can find them later and I'll show you why that's important when you go down here to your polygon dungeon anims you'll notice everything in here has an SD underscore well when I'm in here looking for all my other stuff I can go for the retargeting portion of this if you look under the dynamic combat system data tables he has player one one-handed montages common montages and I don't know what the U montages are but basically you would highlight the three of these things and go in here and edit these and what you do in here is each one of these attack montages you have to update where to get the montage information for the character that you're using so you highlight for example light attack and then down here you go and you pick whatever montage you want to use well you know, if this is called 1H Light Attack, what I did is I would go in here and say, I would do 1H Light Attack, for example, and it'll filter it down. And then I could compare that I have an SD version of whatever the original was called. So this one was called M1H Light Attack 02, and it was easy for me to just replace it with SD underscore M underscore 1H Light Attack 02. Hopefully that makes sense. Now, if you're a little lost on all that, if you go to, if you end up buying this um, dynamic combat system, if you go into your library and you punch in dynamic, it'll filter this down. So dynamic combat system. Uh, I actually started looking at ALS V4 with Cinti characters, and I did a little bit of that. 
and somebody does have a, a tutorial on YouTube for it. I can put one up if uh, if that's something you're interested in. I can throw that together. But what I was actually interested in doing is merging the dynamic combat system with the ALS4 and the Cinti asset characters. Because um, I thought it would be pretty nice. But back here to this dynamic combat system, if you go in here, um, you go to his tutorials section. And he has his, uh, his own little website here for all that. And in here, it tells you how to move this onto a different skeleton. And basically, this video this video will show you retargeting onto just so happens to be a Cinti Polygon character, which is this cop right here. But that's basically a Cinti, Cinti asset. So that's where I got the idea, you know, or the information of how to do all that was basically from his website. So if anything I showed you a couple minutes ago looked confusing, you know, that's where you want to go and and dig through that. It's an easy way to get back to the documentation if you just filter out from your primary assets. All right, so it says your characters come back jumbled. Yeah, merge DCS and ALS V4. Yeah, I can uh, I can put that together and uh, I'll just post it on the on the site when I get it done. It'd probably take me a day or so to go through it and figure it all out. So if you just check back, you know, maybe by the end of the weekend, early next week, I'll have something on here for you. The other thing, um, with if you're having trouble with retargeting, so let me go into that real quick while we're while we're talking about this. So hopefully you understand this. But if you're in here with your retargeting, the issue that usually causes you a lot of things to to get jumbled up with a uh, a retarget is if your skeleton. So if we go into the the mesh, your skeletons, you want to make sure under your retarget manager that you have uh, the same pose, right? Which I'm sure you guys are very familiar with this. So you want to make sure that this is in a perfect T-pose now. Dynamic Combat System comes with a T-pose mannequin that you can pull that in and view the pose for. But the other portion of that is this, that in the skeleton tree... A lot of people don't know this, but under the options, there's a thing in here where you can say show retargeting options. And if you highlight this, it shows you how it's going to get translated. Now, on this character, it's not a big deal because this is the source character. But the destination character, for example, if I go down here to the Cinti Polygon meshes for the characters, when I pull his skeleton up, what I did is I went in here and said show retargeting options. And on here, you want your root and your pelvis to be set to animation. Let me see if I can spread this out some. Might not let me slide it out, but um, basically you would want these set to animation and all the other stuff is set to skeleton. And what that's going to do is if your mannequin happens to be larger than the thing that you're retargeting to, which is the case with the Cinti assets, for example, um, by changing where it's actually translating the bones, that will fix that issue for you in most cases. Now here's the other thing. If you go to the retargeting manager, you want to make sure that you have all these things mapped the right way. And a Cinti character has the humanoid with the root bone and all that stuff laid in there already. But if you have a character that doesn't have that, you can get a file off of my drive. So let me go back here real quick. There's going to be like a little bit of inception here. But if you go to my channel, even in the content for this video, um, I leave a link in here. I don't know if I, you can't see it from here, but I leave a link in here that basically goes to my uh, my Google Drive. Let's see if I can get to it. Google Drive. Yeah, my drive right here. So if you go to my Google Drive, the link's on this video. I'm pretty sure. It's, if it's not, it's on one of my videos. And in here, I have a thing called... Uh, I have a thing in here called... Unreal. Where's it at? Unreal Training Downloads. Now, the link will take you directly into this folder. But under the one for animation, I have a Mixamo bone mapping asset. And I think I have one in here for Cinti bone mapping assets also. But basically, if you don't have all the bones mapped, you can pull that up. And if you're not sure how to set these up for translation, the skeleton retargeting map right here will show you what gets mapped to where from a Mixamo skeleton to a UE4, for example. And these become really super important if you're trying to bring in animations from, um, from Mixamo. So I have all that information out there for you, and I have tons of videos. If you go to my channel, which is in here somewhere, if you go back to my channel, I have a couple of um, 
well, quite a few actually retargeting videos because what I was trying to do is to set up some basic information for people. And I found that when I started, the thing that bothered me the most was trying to get my character into the game so that I could run around and not have that uh, mannequin. But you see here, I do a retargeting Cynthia asset live stream here. I do one for Paragon assets. I pull in Cynthia with Mixamo animations. So I have a lot of stuff in here. And I even talk a little bit about root motion guides and some other things in there. So if you get a chance, take a look through that content. If you have questions or whatever, one of these has my Discord on it. Um, I think you can get a hold of me there or just, uh, you know, shoot me a message in one of these videos or something. I'm usually pretty responsive. So, but yeah, I'll, I'll definitely uh, take a look at that because it's something I'm already uh, in the middle of checking out for, uh, for that. So on that thing that we were just looking at, that was the dungeon pack. So right now that whole thing I just showed you with all those assets is on sale for $39 and 99 cents from the uh, Cinti store. And then they also have this dungeon maps add on, which is another nine 99. Now, I didn't go through all that yet, but I will, um, I'll cover that if you want to. I could go and pull it in. I don't even know if I downloaded that yet. I just bought it the other night. But I think that this would get you what you're looking for um, if you want to do like a dungeon crawler type thing. So that is the gist of it. Hopefully I answered some of your questions or gave you some ideas about how you could use this. I want to go back to what I talked about a second ago with the shield. In the DCS package, there is a section in here somewhere called item instances and so in here I've got the sword I've already swapped out but I could also switch out the shield so you go into the item instances double click this and you're going to want to go into the static or the uh, viewport rather and then you can go in here and just change out whatever it is that you're looking at so if I go to shield and we had that ornate um, ornate shield that we flipped around so there it is just hit compile and save and go back in here and he should have on the ornate shield now on his back the way that we put it and when I see I move that in a little bit when I click it he'll equip everything and I've got that pulled down tight enough that you may not notice that it's not really attached the way the shield would be of that normally his arm would be turned the other way but this is how he blocks with that type of shield and then you, know, you can still swing so it looks pretty cool and again with the weapons all you're going to do the shield's pretty easy you just swap that out and it works let me see if i can get a character in here uh to fight against his his ai characters are pretty tough to beat <laughs> to be honest with you i don't normally do real well against them but he should have a enemy Let's see, where's he at? Where did I put that guy? Mm, let's search the whole thing for enemy. Well, there's the training dummy. We could pull that guy in. So I'll just put these guys out here just to show you that the weapons work. So when you go to play, um, there's your... Yeah, so you, you joined a little bit late for the brightness being high. Uh, here's how you fix that. If you go into your, into your editor and go to Show, you want to go down here to Post Processing. And you want to go down here to eye adaptation and shut that off. If I leave it turned on, mine will get bright like yours is. I, I just mentioned that right before you got here. But yeah, if you go into show, post processing, and shut off eye adaptation, it'll make it so that it uses the lighting in the area. And uh, you can play around with the settings in eye adaptation underneath of the camera. But this is the quick way to just disable it right in there. So now that you got the uh, the items in here, and I got this on the guy, just pull this up, all right? And you can see that this guy will be able to do damage. If you hit tab, it locks you onto your character. Okay. 
And I'm out of stamina, which is why I'm only swinging every once in a while. But uh, we'll do a finishing move to him, which is alt and left click. And on this DCS package, I'm not sure if you're familiar with it, but if you hit the tab key, um, that's how you target onto the character. And then for your inventory and your items, you have U, which pulls up all the equipment list of all the different things that you could um, put on. And then I, I is if you actually want to use them during the game. So, I don't know. I think these came out pretty nice. I think they look good. If I want to change the weapon out, now you can, there's a tutorial in here about how to change your weapons. But I'm just saying that even if you want to do a quick swap out, what you do is you go into the Sinti packages. You find a thing that you want to use. So, if I go in here to Sinti items or weapons, rather. Let's say I wanted to use this uh, double crystal sword. What I did is I put these sockets on here. And the way that he has the sockets is it's socket, then socket underscore two, four, six, and eight. And you spread them out. I could switch that one out. But let's go to one that I don't have on there. So here's a weapon cutlass. Let's do this as an example. So this cutlass doesn't have any sockets on there. So if I equip this uh, thing, it's not going to do anything. Small weapon cutlass zero one. We just need to remember that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit create socket. And I'll hit that a couple times. So I got socket, and I'll have two, four, six, and we'll go to eight. So what I'm going to do is rename this one to underscore two. I will rename this one to underscore four. Rename this one here to underscore six. And rename this one to socket underscore eight. And so if I grab a hold of, just highlight them each here, they'll, it'll switch over which one I've got. So I'm going to go to socket 8, and I'm going to pull that one all the way up to the tip of this thing. Socket 6 is going to get pulled up just below that. 4 would be just above middle. 2 is going to be right around the middle. And then the main socket will just pull up a little bit, just above the hilt. So you put those sockets on there and save this. So now remember, small weapon cutlass 01. We go back up in here to the item instances. And I can go to the sword now. And under the mesh, I can look for uh, cutlass. So small weapon cutlass 01. I can look at it in the viewport. And that's the, the thing that I had. So now if I go back and hit play. And F11 to full screen that. My guy's going to have that cutlass on his hip. And if I pull that up, there's his cutlass. Now you see his cutlass is not at the correct orientation. All right. So what I do with that is I go in here, real quick, easy way, is I go back into this instance and I would go to that static mesh viewport and I could take that cutlass and I could just real quick take that thing and rotate it by grabbing this little bottom piece. I'll pull it 90 degrees this way. And then I'm just going to go and hit the play button again to see if that fixed it. And it did. And since I have those uh, since I have those sockets on there now, I can hit the tab key. Eh, maybe I'm going to turn them down some to say. Nope. Well, I lied to you. Did I grab the right cutlass? Small weapon cutlass zero one. Go to it. No, I grabbed the wrong one. My fault. <laughs> I was going to say, see that? Well, that's what happens if you don't have the sockets on there. So what did I grab? I must have grabbed cutlass two. I have to go back, go back and watch my own live stream and figure out what the hell I clicked on here. What did I click on? It's not that one. Not that one. thought it was one of these, but I guess it's not. Hmm. 
Maybe I didn't save it. I thought I did, though. I'll have to go back and watch this and see what I did. Well, we'll just do it again. So let's go to Small Weapon Cutlass 03. Create our sockets. Underscore 2. Underscore 4. Underscore 6. And underscore 8. Again, take your socket 8, pull it up to the, towards the tip there. Socket 6 just below it. You're just spreading these out so that basically when they collide with the collision mesh on the character that you're hitting, um, it can trigger an event to process the the weapon damage and all that kind of stuff. All right, so there that is. Now I hit save on here. And small weapon cutlass 03. All right, see, so we did it again. Instance. Mesh viewport. And we'll just see if that works. Now I think it's... There we go. So you just add those sockets to it, and then you can you can use it as a weapon. Now there's probably somewhere in there that uh, I don't know too much about that overall package. I just started playing with DCS a couple of days ago, but um, there's probably somewhere in there to dictate how much damage this thing does upon uh, hit and all that. And again, when you when you put this away, I see you notice that that's upside down. So what we would want to do is we would go, because until you try different weapons that have different angles on them, you may not notice some of them are two-sided and they're the same thing, so they look right, even though they're not. Um, like that ornate sword, for example, is uh, the same on both sides. But what I would do to fix this is I would go back into, at F11, I'm going to go into my skeleton for the characters. I'm going to go to that dungeon skeleton, and I would go over here. And probably what you want to do is when you're putting these in in the first place, I'm going to go and clear all these, remove all attached assets. I'm going to go in here and find his sword, where his sword was hanging. And I would say add preview asset. And uh, this was the cutlass. O3. And if I look at that, I'll see that that thing's not correct. And I can go and highlight the sword socket and rotate that around to make it look right. And go 90 right there. And hit play. And now that's off because in the blueprint for the sword... And you'll have to set these up. Once you get them set up, they're they're going to be the same for all of them. But I had modified this earlier in the, um, I was saying in the items where you have the instances. This instance for the viewport, that sword's mesh. I'm going to go over here, and I think you're just going to spin this back 90 degrees, compile, save, and you tweak these and get them right. You know, you, you write down the settings for them. And I guess worst case scenario, if you had to, you could always write a script or something that says whenever I grab certain things. But that should put it now that the sword is hanging in the proper orientation. And he draws it and he's holding it with the... Uh, I don't know. Well. Oh, because I changed... I changed uh, my fault. Listen, I'm jacking you guys all up here. My fault. Because I changed the instance portion I can go back and undo what I did earlier to the skeleton portion where the socket is so we go back to our skeleton uh, we go back to polygon dungeon character skeleton and we take his sword use we're going to attach cutlass 03 on there. 
Oh, that's the sheath. Remove all attached assets. Right click and say preview. And there's the actual weapon. Yeah, and then what I would just want to do with this is grab that sword use socket. And I'm going to come off to the side here so that I can see it a little bit better. And just take this and tilt it 90 degrees now. Save it and go back. Now everything should be okay. I had modified these sockets earlier without uh, modifying the individual instances. And that's kind of where you can manage it because the instance of the weapon might have different orientations, but you leave the sockets set the right way. You correct them at the instance level, and then every weapon that you want to attach has its own weapon name or instance name that you're going to pull up. So there's the, the weapon and properly uh, properly got the orientation on it. And by adding the sockets in, we were able to do our damage. Okay. Now, eventually, I may incorporate the other uh, DCS packages in here. I might go and buy the um, Dynamic Combat System. I think I had the Magic one or something. There was one they gave away for free a couple of months ago or maybe, maybe longer ago. But uh, I think it's a really nice, quick way to get a hack and slash type of thing going on because you can certainly put together items and inventory and pickups and everything. So if you just wanted to go through like a dungeon crawler type experience, um, you know, right out of the box, that's pretty inexpensive way to get into it and as i mentioned the whole reason i was doing this is because the synthia asset packs are on sale and uh give you a chance to look at those and see if it's something you're you're interested in buying or if you already had them maybe I'll show you a little bit about how to use them so there you go all right so if um if you don't have any other questions or anything like that i'm probably going to cut the stream off and then uh, tomorrow night, hopefully around the same time, I'm going to get back on and I'm going to do another Synthi Asset Pack for the Pirates, um, Polygon Pirates kit, also in here with DCS. And then I'll pull in some of the other ones and, and again, just go through like an asset overview and, and show you what's in there. Again, my name's TC Made with TC Gaming. Hopefully you got something of value out of this. I'm not a professional educator. I don't work for Synthi Polygon. I'm not affiliated with the Unreal Engine system. I'm just a guy like you out there navigating my way through it all. And I, again, you know, I just, I, when I was getting into this, one of the things that you come across real quick is that you need um, at, uh, art assets and, and some way to put them into a game. This is a really great package to be able to, to get a lot of assets for inexpensive. And right now when they're running this 50% off sale, I just felt obligated to go and talk about them because they've really given me a lot of assets for the money. So, again, my name is TC Mabe. Thanks for watching tonight, and I'll be putting out some uh, actual tutorials after I do these live streams for the Cynthia Asset Packages. I'm actually thinking about doing a, like, a beginner's course for building a, a basic level, <clears throat> and I'm going to go every all the way from, uh, you know, adding a third-person project, retargeting animations onto a character, doing some basic design construction work, maybe a little bit of blueprinting, a little bit of uh, AI usage and stuff like that, and then probably write down a compiled package. Just kind of a quick start for those of you who might be new to the engine. And uh, <clears throat> I found myself struggling through all that stuff when I first got started, and I think it would have been helpful if there was something that I could go through a very, very simple, you know, build a level, add a character, pick something up, drop it, equip a weapon, you know, so on and so forth. So if you guys have any suggestions or anything that you're interested in seeing, um, just, you know, leave me a message here in the thing. Uh, again, you know, I, I said uh, to Warhands here, I'll try and uh, take a look at that DCS ALS V4 and try and get that all incorporated and give you some pointers on that if I can get it all figured out in the next couple of days. I won't be covering that tomorrow night with the live stream because I want to dedicate some time to this uh, Polygon asset sale to try and help these guys out. My guess is that because everything's kind of... Um, financially unstable right now that these guys are having a big sale to try and drive some more purchases and you know again by purchasing from the Cinti store you're directly supporting the developers of the content and helping those guys make even more assets so my secondary gain is if they stay in business and keep putting out awesome packs i get to buy more cool stuff for cheap so if you guys uh don't have any more questions i'm going to go ahead and sign off here and again thank you so much for watching 
Um, I will catch you again tomorrow night. Take care.